The advances in the way society functions, from business to lifestyle and from medicine to communications, rely heavily on the innovations that are happening in the areas of science, technology, engineering and maths, more commonly referred to as STEM. While recruitment in STEM jobs in Ireland is on the rise, it's reckoned that women only account for one in four jobs in the area as a whole. Changemaker Dr. Katrina O'Sullivan from Maynooth University has been working in the area of equality in education for many years. She is the research lead of the STEM Passport for Inclusion project. And one area that's really, really important right now is trying to support girls, but particularly working class girls, to actually be able to engage in the technological revolution. Like we're in the middle of a STEM revolution, like with a skills gap in islands. And so my, my work is about trying to take my research and say, how can we make sure that this particular group are skilled, are motivated, believe in themselves and that they can move into STEM jobs and STEM courses and STEM professions if they choose to. Katrina and her team has come to the Mercy Secondary School in Inchicore in Dublin to work with its senior cycle students. The principal of the school is Michelle O'Kelly. Mercy Secondary School is situated in Inchicore in Dublin 8. We have an enrolment of 170 students. We do have a status of being a DESH school, so that's delivering equality of opportunity and skills. So really what this means is we have a very specific action plan to target educational disadvantage and address this through a number of initiatives and programmes. Like, I go into the school, it's probably the best time I have out of all of my job, apart from lecturing the students, because you just get to learn and see that there's so much potential and talents and, and, and just savvy in these kids, and so much aspiration and drive for life, and it's, it's a real privilege, and I, I love going into the schools. You get eight subjects that you'll study for a leaving cert, and the best six of them, right, you can get up to 100 points. We're here today to begin my research project, which is called the STEM Passport for Inclusion. First day is just introducing the mentors to the young women and getting them familiar with each other. And I suppose beginning that process of trying to introduce them to the idea that STEM is possible for them. I'm very interested in English and um, geography because I want to be a secondary school teacher. Katrina's programme is working with nearly 1,000 Irish girls. It offers the girls a pathway to STEM careers via a university accredited STEM qualification, as well as connecting them with professional women who work in the country's leading tech companies. I'd love to do surgery, but I'd also be very interested in like the research side of things. Like, I'd love to research all about different diseases and cancer and everything like that, so. You have a mentor at your table. What I want you to do is I want you to find out the most interesting facts about your mentor. But you also have to find out about her job, what she does for a living, try and find out how much she gets paid. So you have five minutes, let's go. I got involved in the programme because Katrina was telling me all about it and I was like, I would absolutely love to get involved with that because one, I'm very, very passionate about working in STEM and I'm also a teacher, so, you know, I absolutely love working with students. I literally, I didn't have a clue what Minecraft was, and the first day I started at Microsoft, it was like a summer camp, and the kids were like, oh, can you... I thought she was great, she was really chatty, and she, yeah, she really, like, was relatable and reached out to us about, like, her story and how anyone can go to college. Your job. Yeah. So I technically still work in Reach as a teacher. But I'm always amazed that even when Alex and Esther were talking there, saying, what do you want to do? And, you know, Esther was saying, oh, I want to do medicine, I want to do the HPAT, and I need this many points. And, you know, then they were saying, oh, I want to do secondary school teaching, I might do English. And they knew how many points and stuff, and they knew about ordinary versus higher. And I was like, oh, my God, you're so lucky, because when I was in school, it was great, and the guidance counselor were great, but I wish I kind of had my head, like, screwed on like they do at this age. In the results. And you can still keep your job. We're genuinely very proud to say that in Dublin 8, the average is about 28% progression. But this year we had 90% progression to university. That sounds, you know, 
great, but behind that is a huge amount of effort, hard work and partnerships with parents and the community to help that happen. When I was younger, we took photos and then we printed them. So this is an album from way back when. There's one of me and I was there talking about the kid, the girls in the school. Like that was my first year in, um, in secondary school. Uh, yeah, so full of hope then. One thing about me is like I have that rags to riches tale, you know, come from the flats, really poor family. So I left school at 15 and pregnant. That's one of my, the worrying things that I, I do tell them. That's me there, and there's me, 15, with John. Yeah, John's about six months there. And I always say, take note that I'm not, you don't have to do this to get where I am. But I, I have to be honest about where I've come from and who I am. Yeah, that's when I met actually the woman who kind of inspired me to go to college, a woman called Karen. She, she was on her own with her kids and I remember meeting her one day and she told me she was in Trinity and I was like, no way, no one like us goes to Trinity. The day I met her, I went over to Trinity that day and asked them about the access programme and applied straight away. Didn't have a clue what I was getting myself into, but uh, that was a real hopeful time. The Mercy School girls have started fifth year and they are now on their next stage of their STEM passport journey with Katrina and the mentors from Microsoft Ireland. We're in with uh, Katrina for the STEM passport programme with Microsoft and we're just getting introduced to it and having time with our mentors. Because there's data on it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's important to have role models from all areas. And right now, these kids are limited in terms of seeing scientists and STEM successful women, knowing them, really knowing them, and then being able to use that information to decide whether that's for them or not. So the STEM passport is all about that. And we do say to the mentors that we're recruiting, we don't really care what you do or what you say. What's more important is how you say it and that you're there consistently with these young women. I think role models are like very important for any girl, like my age, even younger. Like I think everybody needs a, such a good, strong, like female role model, especially if you're a girl, because when you're growing up around like where we're from, it's kind of like you don't really see anybody like that. It's kind of all just like ma's and all, and then you're just like, I'm just supposed to be that. So it's just, like a little bit of a push to say you don't have to end up like that. Like you can become somebody else. Like you can kind of make it for yourself. I relate to all of them, but mostly that the gobby one at the back of the room. So Caitlin. Is uh, I relate to Caitlin a lot. And so I was that kid that had the potential. And so I relate to that in other kids. And I, all of them have potential. I never go into a room and think that any of them can't be whatever it is they want to be. I think we just all have different challenges or different goals. My plan was that like, I just flow through skill. Like I didn't really need the leave and start threatening. So I was thinking, like I want to do her dressing like my brother. Katrina then came in with the programme and I was thinking, like, I can do that, like, really well. So now I want to do something in STEM. Katrina is bringing the girls to Dogpatch Labs, a Dublin-based tech company that offers a range of opportunities for young entrepreneurs who are at the early stage of their tech business. One of Katrina's mentors is Clodagh Moriarty from Microsoft Ireland. I've been privileged to have an absolutely amazing uh, career in tech so far, so it's been uh, challenging, enjoyable, I've grown massively because of it and I really want a way to connect with younger girls and say to them, listen, consider this as a future career uh, uh, option. It's so enjoyable, you will learn so much, you will grow so much as a person. Produce this new product line. One of the elements of the skills program that we're offering these girls is that they start to build their own ideas with technology, but also ideas that are meaningful for society so they can see how an idea can come to fruition and have the skills to do that. And so what we've done in the, in the dream space activities is we've actually brought them to the point where they've developed an idea. The girls are meeting Ashleen Conlon from Dogpatch to talk about the ideas they developed during the project. Um, you've made the you've made a prototype. Yeah, I coded. Wow, <laughs> you're a coder. <laughs> Amazing. You'd be perfect in Dogpatch. Yes. <laughs> Do you think it it could go globally? Do you think? I think it could. Anybody could use them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought we were just gonna come here and like get a tour, but like it was good getting to pitch the idea because now like we have the experience in that, and like we know 
like now, like what it would be like if we walked pitch my day to somebody? The highlights of the experience would be like learning new things and coming out with like your friends and getting out of school really. But it's like learning all new about coding and stuff that you wouldn't learn about. So it's really just opened my eyes to like new, new ideas. I truly believe that a programme like this can change lives and that the girls that we work with today will be the ones who shape society for the future through their work, through what they can create and deliver using technology as an enabler and they will help to shape uh, society for the future but also they in turn can be role models for future generations. <laughs> Trina and the girls are reflecting back on their time in the STEM Passport for Inclusion programme. Yeah, I do think it'll change my life because I have like the connections now and I have like the information that I need to get into it. Whereas before, like I'd know nothing about it. Like it just, like it seems like such a far reach when you haven't done the program. Like even when we were getting explained what the program was, it's like, oh my god, it's like that's so, like unrealistic. But now it's like that's so easy. Like that'd be so easy for like all of us to do. I think the STEM passport for inclusion has the potential to change lives. I'm not saying we're gonna go from having no scientists to 1,000 girls. I think it has the potential to allow young women, young working class women, to see themselves and their own futures differently. And I think even if that doesn't manifest in their own choices now, that will influence maybe what they think their kids can be, what they tell their little sisters or brothers, the television programs that they watch, the books they read, and all that will is a positive impact. So yeah, I think it has the potential to really change lives and to have a big impact.